TV doctors discuss their careers tomorrow at 9. From New York, famed for its crusty sourdough bread, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, actress Ava Gabor, a look at bats with Dr. Merlin Tuttle, and from Monty Python, John Cleese. Also, a visit to the Rock and Roll Museum. And now, a man who can bench press his own weight and his own bench, David. Have him taken out and strip searched. Uh, welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Letterman. I'll be uh, hosting the festivities here tonight. And uh, well, uh, let's just start off with uh, kind of some sad news. I guess yesterday, Sylvan N. Goldman passed away. He was uh, he was 86 years old, which is nice. He had a nice, uh, full, uh, long life. And uh, do you know do you know what he did, Bill? Do you have any idea what this man did? No, I don't. Do it. Paul, any idea what Sylvan uh, N. Goldman did? No, sir. Sylvan. I heard it up there. Yeah, he he actually this is the man who invented the grocery store shopping cart, and it was. Uh, oh. <laughs> it was uh, interesting and uh, kind of sad and yet kind of amusing. After the funeral, uh, on the way to the cemetery, the hearse kept pulling to one side of the. <laughs> sort of uh. the Strangely tragic in its own way, wasn't it? What the heck is today's date? What is today? 27th? So we're about done with uh, February here. November, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, too warm in New York City. I hope, uh, oh, they're having a terrible snowstorm in the, mid, uh, the middle of the country, but here it's, well, I, I don't know, you're on the wrong coast. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we, uh, we get a good show tonight, uh, interesting as well as good. Now, let me just clear this up. When I say we have a good show tonight, we have a good show every night. We're in the business of presenting quality programming. Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, tonight we have Ava Gabor, John Cleese, and a bat demonstration with Dr. Merlin Tuttle, so there you go. You know, once again, of course, uh, we're right in the middle of the holiday season when family members gather together to affirm the traditional values of this great land of ours. What better time for us to pay tribute to the music that holds every one of these values in complete contempt? Yes, <laughs> join us now as we pay a visit to the Museum of Rock and Roll. Walk this way, won't you? The Museum of Rock and Roll, here we go. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. Here we are in the museum, and as always, I think you'll agree with me, it's more like a shrine than a museum. This is our, our first exhibit tonight. This is a constantly being updated. This is a complete list of everyone who claims to be the fifth Beatle. Let's take a look here. <laughs> There's Pete Best, Billy Preston, Stu Sutcliffe, so on and so Alan Klein, Florence Henderson, Shemp, Howard Jeffman. <laughs> Ken... This is kind of a surprise. Ken Norton as Mandingo. I didn't, uh... But it's uh, constantly being updated. Next, next here we have a tribute to a great rock and roll star that is also really a practical thing to have around. This is the Keith Richards weather indicator. <clears throat> Here's how this works. You just read there. Keith skin yellow, fair days ahead. All right. Turn it around. Keith's skin blue, expect rain instead. So that's... Kind of a nice little weather indicator for you. Well, 
You know, a lot of rock stars uh, go out on the road in elaborately appointed tour buses, and nobody, believe me, nobody traveled in greater luxury than the king himself, Elvis Presley. Here is his GMC diesel-powered land yacht. This thing had a plush living room, a comfortable bedroom, and a fully equipped gourmet kitchen. But what about those between-meal snacks? No problem. That's why Elvis always traveled with this, his own rolling snack annex. Without this next exhibit, rock and roll as we know it would not exist. Uh, this gentleman is Bob Selig. Bob, nice to see you. Hello. Thanks for being part of the exhibit tonight. <laughs> it was August 12th, 1967, the Fillmore East Cream was the band performing. Eric Clapton was in the middle of a long guitar solo. And what was it, Bob, that you did that changed the face of rock and roll forever? Ow! Well, congratulations, Bob. A proud nation salutes you. Better move along here before the museum closes. Where, where are we here? Excuse me, Bob, I have to continue with this. <laughs> Unlike you, I'm not finished yet. Um, <laughs> like NASA, rock and roll music has been the source of many inventions that make our lives much easier. Here, proudly displayed, is one of those spin-off inventions. This, of course, is the Kiss Stamp Moistener. <laughs> that that I think we have some mail here for you, Bob. <laughs> well, perhaps the most annoying part of any disc jockey's job is having to talk to fanatics who call in to request the Led Zeppelin classic, Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> uh, that's why a group of on-air personalities from the Midwest came up with the idea of the DJ Parrot to handle these calls. Here's, here's how it works. Someone calling in right now. Let's see who Hey, uh, I'm calling from Mineola. And um, a bunch of us are sitting around, and... Uh, hey, shut up, Lenny, I'm on the air. And um, could you play Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> sure, man, we'll get it right on. Sure, man, we'll get it right on. Sure, man, we'll get it right on. <laughs> sure, man, we'll get it right on. Sure, man, we'll get it right on. Is that all right, Bob? Now, now, where are we here? We're right here, aren't we? <laughs> and finally, sometimes the most popular exhibits here at the museum are those donated by the rock and roll stars themselves. And here we have probably the most talked about exhibit in the entire museum. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ozzy Osbourne's pet hamster. <laughs> No damn point in getting up. Well, anything? I'd like to read my letter there. No, no, you, you, you save the letter for a little later. Well, we have a wonderful show for you, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll begin in just a few minutes. We're going to pause here for a commercial, and we'll, we'll be ap apologizing individually to the members of the studio audience, and then we'll be right back here. I think everybody tonight gets soup and hot towel. Princess Di's maiden name. Spencer. Great! You know the best actor in 82? Yes. Get in here. The answers in Parker Brothers' new People Weekly trivia game. Who wrote the best selling novel? Questions are about today's most fascinating people in categories like TV, music, and sports. Thousands of questions in all. Who's the tallest player in the NBA? What do you think, kid? Parker Brothers kind of fun! Stick around, kid. You might learn something. Brings people together.
They always want pizza, popcorn, pancakes right now. Why can't I make some they'll really like in my microwave? Now you can. Fresh, hot microwave popcorn, fluffy, light Pillsbury microwave pancakes, and crisp, delicious Pillsbury microwave pizza. Pillsbury microwave foods, fresh and full of flavor in your grocer's freezer. Now you can, now you should. Pillsbury microwave is Pillsbury good. All right, Jack. The usual, Pat? No, not that. Too much tonight. So you want it light? Right, but I want to taste the bite. Sack time. Sack time? Try sack on ice, to be precise. Try the taste. What do you think? Nice drink. Light? Quite. Bite? Right. Sack time. John, you're on. Dry sack over ice. When you want it light, but you still want to taste the bite. The usual, Nat? No, not that. Too much tonight. So you want it light? Right, but I want to taste the bite. Lafayette Circuit City insists haggling is not the Christmas spirit. Ho, ho, ho! And what do you want for Christmas, Eddie? A new TV for $400. I'll give you one for $500. Make it $410. $490. For $20. The new Lafayette Circuit City gives you our guaranteed lowest prices for Christmas with no haggling. If you find a lower price, we'll refund the difference plus 10%. Tis the season to be giving, not haggling. Come to Lafayette Circuit City. $460. $440. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. You see, he was the first person to ever do Ow! like that. That's why he was in the museum there. <laughs> Ooh. See, we do one of these test shows periodically just to see if the... Uh, oh, we're forgetting the Phil Donahue countdown calendar. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Where are we? Here we are all the way to Tuesday. Okay. So we have uh, a couple of more days left this week. And then when is Phil actually in the building? December... December 3rd. So we'll have... Uh, you know darn well we'll have something extra special planned for that night. <laughs> Phil Donahue will... Uh, there it goes. $2,200 for that right there. <laughs> How much did it cost for the museum? How much was that worth? Let's try and figure out. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that wasn't quite $2,200, was it? $2,200 for counting labor. Uh, we're certainly getting our money's worth tonight, then, aren't we? We, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful program for you tonight. It's a, it's a classic, uh, interesting mixture of varied and wonderful guests. <laughs> and we're going to begin it right now. My, my first guest is probably the only Hungarian to ever co-star in a television series with Eddie Albert. <laughs> Wait a minute, the, the introductions get bigger laughs than the material. Why? She's also the first woman to ever do this. Uh, she is also the head of a very successful wig company and the second Gabor sister to appear on this program. Please join me now in welcoming Ava Gabor. You are lovely, darlings. Thank you. <laughs> you must admit that this dress looks better from the back than the front. Much better. It looks it's a very nice dress. David, you know you're very cute. I always see you lying down. Yeah. He's not, I mean, I really do. He's not lying down. I am because you do come on very, come very late. Come on awfully late. Yes, you do. Nice to see you. You look terrific, and uh, thank you for being here. Now, were you in New York 
and uh, just came by, or did no, you come darling, in from somewhere else? I just came in from somewhere, you know, California, way out there. Uh -huh. I came to see you because I can't just have Jaja know you. I had to come yeah. and know you too. Yeah, your sister was here. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you talk to your sister after she had been on the show? No. Why did you have trouble? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean to her? They told me that you can be terrible. Are you terrible? No, I'm no. I'm. I'm Are you going no. to start with me? You're no. adorable. You I'm, want to say something? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I try to be very well-mannered and polite, and, and sometimes people say that I'm, uh, s say nasty things, but Do it's, you? Oh, oh, no, it's just a joke. I know, darling, I We're know. We're only I... trying to have fun here. But that's the only way, but if you want to be nasty, be nasty to me, not behind me. I don't like those people who talk badly behind you. Behind your back is the word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's. Good reaction. But nobody. No, no, wait a minute. Nobody. Nobody's saying anything nasty about you behind your back. Nobody. You know, nobody ever has. It worries me. <laughs> it really does. I have the best reputation, which is actually amazing. Well, you're a, a nice, talented, lovely woman. So what could be wrong with that? So far, nothing. Let's see what happens by the time I leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like your band. They're terrific. Yeah. I had a good dance in the back. You're terrific. Yeah, they're very nice. We're so lucky to have them. So what's news with you, darling? Well, now, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, we just did a wonderful piece of comedy at the yeah, top I of the show. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it in the green right, room. So I wonder who wrote it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I hear they picked up your show for another year. Yeah, that's right. Now you better get somebody else to write this monologue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always say what's on my mind. It's yeah. a big mistake. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm joking, darling. No, I know, your I know. reactions yeah. were gorgeous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, what? No, no, you're, so you live in California all the time. I do live in yeah, California. You live in Beverly I'm Hills, don't you? Not all the time. No. Yes, yes. Now, is it true that you raise chickens there? Yes, I have 20 chickens. I love fresh eggs. But you can't, you, there's, there's got to be some municipal code against having livestock on your property. Not really, because I have two acres, and if there is a code, they never bothered me. Uh -huh. You see, Green Acres really rubbed off me. I have a vegetable garden. Yeah. I have some... I don't know if you ever did see Green Acres. Oh, sure. I saw it all the time. Well, you know, it was a... <laughs> it no, was I'm a, serious. I saw it a lot. I know. It was a lovely show, and it's still on. But the corn is just as bad as it, as it was on the show. It sort of lies down a bit. But I love fresh vegetables. I love eggs. And I, I have all sorts of animals. I have dogs and cats. How many so dogs do you have? Only four. What kind of dogs? I have two big police dogs, one very black one who is adorable and one very white one. Mm -hmm. Then two lasso upsos, and then a Miss Puss Puss, an adorable alley cat. What is that? What is the, the, the Miss Puss Puss, that's yeah. her name. <laughs> Lovely. Well, that's the cat. I better watch it with him, don't yeah. I? Uh -huh. I am really on my guard. <laughs> What? I know, I, I, <laughs> You're I looking don't know. at me like you don't know what you want to ask. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, things don't seem to be uh, meshing here, but... Uh, they never do. They, they hardly ever do. You're right. So it doesn't, doesn't uh, make a That's damn bit of difference. That's the charm of your show, you oh, know. thank you. Now, what uh, are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> One never can tell what's going to happen next here. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, darling. You were going to ask me something. Uh, I, don't be bashful. Okay. <laughs> I, I was uh, I was only going to ask you uh, how is it possible to keep all of these animals in Beverly Hills, but you said you got a lot of property, so it doesn't make any difference. No, it they make a lot of noise, do they? Well, well, if, I, I don't know. I guess they do. I have well, a. Well, now what about the neighbors? Do the neighbors ever they complain? They never bother me, but I have a lovely rooster. When I work, I get up at four thirty. And the roosters don't get up, as you know, before the light goes on. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually in makeup already, and they crook, crook, you know how rooster goes. Mm -hmm. Husband of the chicken. Mm -hmm. They're adorable. Uh, Did you? Are the you wondering? husband of the chicken. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I mean, there's one thing about David. He looks at you with such a blank look that you never know. You don't know whether he's with you at all. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? I'm, believe me, I'm with you. Promise. I, re I really am with okay. you. Okay. Are, are you with me? I am not sure. Yeah. Because you look at me very strangely. Oh, Are you married? Uh, well, it's, it's, you know, it's a... <laughs> Are you living with somebody? Yeah. That's the thing to do nowadays. That's what they tell me. I mean, they really do. Are I'm, you married? I knew you were going to ask that. I, I put my two foots into that one. 
Well, I'll be serious <laughs> for one minute. I must tell you, are you going to listen to me? I must tell you. <laughs> I like you, David. I like you. I like, you. I like you. I like everything. I couldn't be happier tonight. I don't... <laughs> Well, yeah. then I tell you something very serious, and that's for the girls to listen to, because for the first time in my life, I am not married, and I'm living alone. How many times have you been married? That's none of your business. <laughs> we, could if... go, we could go to the court and look it up. No, we no, could, you We could can't. go down I to the courthouse no, and look it up. It's public record. Three and a half times. Once only... <laughs> I mean, one was only three weeks. That really doesn't Really? Count. Now, who, who, who are you married to? Don't for... bother me about names. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. <laughs> 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 And now I'm serious. Now listen to me, girls. For the first time in my life, as I said, I'm not married a year and a half, and I have learned how to run my life alone. I do my own investments. I do my taxes, God knows, with an accountant, mm -hmm. of course. And I love being alone, and I have learned that my own company is pretty darn good. Sure. It took me a lot of psychiatry and a lot of learning and a lot of suffering because I was, in a way, always I thought I marry a man, he knows more than sure. I, he's better than I am. It's not true. Girls, let me tell you, they're not half as good as we are. <laughs> That's the gospel. I mean, I love man, I'm queer for man. But <laughs> you, I'm not sure with my lecture, but you must put man in the proper places, yeah. in their perspective. <laughs> You've got to look at it in the right perspective. All right, we have and to. now, I'm not sure yet. And now, now when I'm going to find a man I love, he's going to have a full woman. Good for That's you. That's my lecture. That's good for you. Now, we have to do a commercial. And I wasn't through. No, well, you, we'll finish ahead. up when we come back. But I, I do want to find out what, how you can be married for three and a half uh, weeks. I tell you, after the commercial, right, okay. they fire us. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. And when many adults get a cough, they play doctor at home. They treat their cough with the same medicine they originally bought for their children. They need one of the adult formulas from Vicks for the coughs adults get with the strength adults need. Formula 44 for coughs, 44D for coughs with congestion, and now Formula 44M for coughs with congestion and a raw, irritated throat. The adult formulas. You can't buy anything more effective. The adult formulas from Vicks, of course. Today, class, we're making souped-up meatloaf. Souped-up? We're souping it up with Lipton onion soup mix. Just let Lipton special seasonings and toasted onion pieces soup it right up. Delicious! Mm. <laughs> soup up your recipes with Lipton. Come into the sunset. Lipton Citrus Sunset Herbal Tea. Taste oranges, hibiscus, cinnamon, rare divana. Blended for a taste like no other herbal tea. Lipton Citrus Sunset. Tantalizing. Recently, in a small Italian town, a group of men gathered to try a new American ravioli, Superiore ravioli. They were surprised to find it had a taste almost as good as they were used to. When their wives joined them, they also admired the taste. However, they felt this new Superiore ravioli was perhaps best left in America. Superiore ravioli, now available in America. All right. Okay, now, yes. Ava, give us some insight. You were married, what did you say, once for three weeks, three and a half weeks? Uh, about. Now, how long had you known the man before you got married? Oh, it's so boring even to talk about him. He caught me because he went... Uh, Where did you meet him? Don't even talk about it. You know, I had a, a flop on Broadway. And when you have a flop... No, 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 that was when I married this guy. The, and when you have a flop, you, somebody told me you take a trip to Europe or mm -hmm. you have a boyfriend, you don't get married. Mm -hmm. And this guy has been pastoring me forever to marry him. Mm -hmm. And I was so depressed about everything that I said yes. And mm -hmm. then was it ever a mistake. But anyway, that was way back. Yeah. So uh, how did you know it was over? When did you know you had made the mistake? The same night. <laughs> the same night. 
Wow. I'm sorry that did slip out. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't the only reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was not uh, the only reason. <laughs> My darling, this is for grown-up people. This is late night. Oh, I am Now, bad. tell me more about the rooster being the husband of the chicken. <laughs> something interesting. I have 20 girls, and usually I had one rooster. Then I thought, this poor rooster is exhausted. I get another rooster. <laughs> Let me tell you, those two lousy roosters, they killed each other. They would not share the chickens. Yeah. yeah. That tells you a thing or two about men. Yeah. <laughs> Ava, I have here, I have here a... Uh... Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have here, it says, your new catalog of Ava Gabor wigs. Do you know that I have the world largest wig company yeah. called Ava Gabor International? How much is this company worth? Off the top of your head, Many so, millions, so to speak. darling. I don't want to sound rich. Many millions. Many millions. And I, <laughs> and I am the chairman of the board. Do you, do you design the wigs? No, no, you... no. I have a wonderful designer called Joseph of Rome. Let's see. And I think we have a picture of Joseph of Rome. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. And I started it. 16 Picture years ago, Rome. that's him. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know that the chairman of the board has a bigger picture? Well, that's sure, me. That's, sure, you should have a bigger picture. <laughs> but in any case, well, let's, I started... Let's look, at some, let's look at some of these. You want to? Sure, do you want to? Sure, those We guys. might move some They're tonight. going to be on the cover of Vogue. They come in these lovely boxes. Yep. A ready-to-wear collection. This one is called... Uh, seduction. <laughs> Well, they really are actually wonderful because they're pre-curled and pre-styled. Yeah. And you know how I wash mine? I just wash them in a little shampoo and I shake them out and I put it on a hook. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try it? No, I'm I don't want to. No. Now just you. Why are now wait you a minute. Such a I, I don't. Are you wearing one? No. <laughs> Then I see no reason you have one with the shovel. Uh, oh, you see, Jeff, I was hardly worth coming one. from Hollywood. Here's, a, here's another one. This yeah. is called Gambit. Come in these they don't look so good when you take well, them Well, no, I like think, but people get the idea. Well, now, what, what, are, what does this one cost? Idea. What does this one go well, for? This one about 25, 35, you know. Not too I don't, bad. Not too bad. Now, you got to explain some of these here for now, me. Now, these are my favorites, and they're a big success. They'll be on the cover of Vogue. It's when you go out in the evening and you want to have this color dress. <laughs> this is really you, darling. You mm -hmm. don't want to put this on. Darling. Now, what, what looks good with this when you... <laughs> what? What? You said something. No, we're not... Well, he doesn't. He's a chicken. What now, can I tell you? Now who, now, who would wear this? Who would wear it? Beautiful guys. Who would? Beautiful with women would wear, would yeah, wear it? Of course, darling. With a dress of this color, the, it's the biggest success now. The cover of Vogue has it this month. Don't you like it, girls? Isn't it groovy? <laughs> I do like it. I really do. All right. Well, you're not crazy about it, David, so if you're going to be a sour puss, don't show anymore. Now, that's really the one. <laughs> Have you sold any of these? Darling. <laughs> I must tell you. We cannot keep them in stock. They go so fast. Now, That's how much you know about wigs. Well, you, uh, I'll, I'll uh, accept you that. that. But now, who buys this? Who? Women. What Maybe is... men, too. I don't know. A woman... But it's mostly for women. A, a husband calls home and says, uh, tonight we have to go to dinner uh, at the boss's house. And she says, I think I'll That's run by and pick up an orange it. wig. That's not when she wears it. <laughs> I think you have put our business back instead of forwards. This was a, an episode of Star Trek, wasn't it? These things kind of <laughs> <laughs> took over the Enterprise one night and... Uh... It's a good thing that we're doing good business, otherwise you'll be in big fat trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is this made of, you know? Canacolon. Canacolon. It's all artificial stuff, darling, because uh -huh. the real hair don't last. <laughs> <laughs> and you're moving a lot of them. 
And my moving a lot All of right. them. I well, told you, we an enormous success. Well, that's good. But mainly with Sarah Vicks, you know, the regular blonde, brunette, red. You know, the working girl, when they work all day and they get to look like not so hot, they put on a wig and they can go right away mm -hmm. and out they go and have a ball. And they're arrested as soon as they hit the street. <laughs> 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 you are funny. You okay, are girls, really up funny. against the car. <laughs> Let's see some ID. <laughs> you are very bad. Uh, what, yeah, what are you? Very... How, long, how long are you going to be in town? Well, let me tell you why I'm here. Also, I am talking to my producer. Last year, I was on Broadway, and you can't take it with mm -hmm. you. This Eddie Albert, which was a wonderful joy. There is nothing like being in theater yeah. here. And I'm meeting the same producers, but a lovely property for me. And we're meeting tonight with the director. And I should be back here rehearsing in February oh, for, for another, a new play uh, oh, on good. Broadway. Well, that'll yes. be nice. That'll be and good. I want you all to hold your fingers. I am very, very excited will you about it. Will you invite me to the, the opening, the gala? If you promise to behave. Because <laughs> one cannot. Knowing you, you come with a red wig and you no, stand up no, and no, say, no, hey, no, look no, at me, no. I'm here. No. Uh, geez, I'm, I'm really happy you had time to come by. You're a terrific person. Nice meeting you. It's lovely now, to Now, meet seriously, you. If, if this thing goes, if it gets off the ground, invite me. I'd like to come to this. I will, and you invite me back because I really enjoyed your show. Sure, we'll have you back You're anytime. You're a very nice Nice fella. meeting you. Lovely. We have to uh, pause here for station identification. We'll be back. Christmas bonus. Ho, ho, ho. Underwhelmed? A man is giving a Christmas bonus that won't disappoint you. A U.S. savings bond worth 50 to 75 to $100 just for buying an Amana. So come on into your participating Amana retailer and get your holiday cheer with the Amana Christmas bonus. Break free and feel how splendid you are with Vanderbilt, the rich romantic fragrance by Gloria Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, let it release the splendor of you, Vanderbilt. What was the last exciting thing that happened to you? I don't know the last exciting. What's the last exciting thing that happened to me? I don't have anything to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got a wrong guy for this. <laughs> Want real excitement? Team Pontiac's got it. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am. Front wheel drive, rack and pinion steering. A true performance coupe for only $79.95. Team Pontiac's got your excitement. <laughs> We're here to introduce new Cabbage Patch Kids disposable diapers. Babies go gaga over them. What do you think, fella? Gaga. <laughs> In fact, nine out of ten babies we interviewed... Gaga! ...gave the same response. That's because new Cabbage Patch Kids disposable diapers are even more absorbent than this leading brand. And a lot more fun to wear. Gaga! New Cabbage Patch Kids disposable diapers. <laughs> babies are going gaga over them. <laughs> on V, Elizabeth falls prey to the visitors. Star Child is back in our protection. V, and Hunter's in a showdown with a deadly bounty hunter. I'm gonna stop this guy. Then Miami Vice heads for the Glades. I can't wait, aim for the heart of our way. No! Friday. If you love steam food, but have to leave home to get it, you love the steamer from Rival. Rival has reinvented steam cooking to give you nutritious steam cooked food easily and automatically. The Rival steamer doesn't boil away natural flavor, doesn't add calories, and doesn't expect you to be perfect. It's all automatic. The steamer. 
For three short weeks, Baby Faye fought her lonely battle. But was she alone? No. This is Baby Faye's mother. She talked to people and only to people, telling her child's life day by historic day. Next, people looked at TV's Miami Vice and how Don Johnson changed his bad habits. Then Supergirl, will her movie fly? And this no kidding cure for baldness. So pick up this week's people and make your kids happy with this special people Michael Jackson issue. Both people issues are on sale right now. Black and Decker. How to take a taxi without getting taken. A special report this week at 6. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second half hour of our uh, telecast tonight. Tomorrow on this program, you're going to meet Gary Burton. Do you know Gary Burton, Paul? Not personally, uh, but I'm looking forward to meeting him uh, and playing with him. He is, he is a wonderful to... jazz uh, vibraphonist. He will be playing with the band. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, good. We'll look yeah, forward to that. Be That'll nice. be tomorrow night. Uh, also, uh, the man, the publisher of the Farmer's Almanac, Ray Geiger, will be here. Uh, a special tour of China. Uh, who asked for it? Stupid Petrix. The list goes on. Now, this is an okay show. <laughs> I, I don't like this random whining. <laughs> I'll come up there and teach you people a lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, we got, uh, oh, and uh, the night's still young. We, uh, John Cleves will be out here a little bit later, and uh, my next guest, I'll introduce him right now. He is the uh, curator of mammals at the Milwaukee Public Museum and also the founder of an organization called Bat Conservation International. He has spent 20 years studying bats, and feels that they don't get the respect they rightfully deserve. Please welcome Dr. Merlin Tuttle. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Hi, nice to see you, sir. Have a seat. You're uh, from Milwaukee, right? Everything all right in Wisconsin? Just fine. Good. You know, you're a you're a brave man having uh, me and bats on right after Ava Gabor. Well, how so? Well. Uh, you know, this is only the middle of your show. Yeah. Uh, you know what would happen if one of these guys got out? No. Would it, would it be crazy in here? We asked the audience. I don't know how many would stay. Yeah. Now, now that's true. I, I'm, I'm scared silly of bats, and probably most, most people who know nothing about them are also frightened of bats. Now, is there any real reason to be worried about bats? Actually, not at all. It's very simple. We fear most what we understand the least. Sure. And bats are mostly small active only at night, they're secretive, and so we put them right near the top of our list of most feared animals, yeah. but really, you know, there's no problem with them. Oh my gosh. This is, this bat, and you see how small he is, this bat is the one that sends thousands of otherwise mature grown brave men cowering, running in terror every year. I know of two cases in the last few months in Wisconsin, one man broke his leg, falling downstairs, getting away from one of these guys. <laughs> one broke his arm, swinging a tennis racket around a door jam. Now, can I, do you sure, mind? you can touch him. I don't want to hold him. No? Now, you got to admit, <laughs> <laughs> but these, these things are, are, they're prehistoric looking. They're just, they're, now tell me this. I'm gonna show you some pretty ones in a minute. Okay, now this, this is a mammal, obviously. Yes. Now, when, when, a, when this is born, is it born in, in a litter? Is it born single birth? Is it? Bats are the slowest reproducing mammals on earth. They just produce one young a year. Uh -huh. And that one young, incidentally, when it's born... Whoops, it's so, you squeezed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so large, it's the equivalent of a woman giving birth to a 40-pound baby. No kidding. Right. Too many. Uh, now, what, what other mammal flies? None. And, and what other animal that has ears flies? <laughs> animal? Yeah. I don't think any. Well, see, I now mean, that's... Now, look ears, at that. This little thing has ears on it. Now, that shouldn't be flying. <laughs> but not in... well bats you know for all for all they They're... appear strange to us because they fly and have ears yeah, and... the facts are that the latest tests indicate 
that bats may be among our very closest relatives. People think they're flying mice. They're yeah. far more closely related to people than to rodents. Yeah. In fact, see well, this look, guy, he, he, he looks a little bigger when he starts flying. But these wings are just expanded hands. That's yeah. his thumb there. Yeah. And he has webbing membrane between his fingers. Now, now what about the myth that, uh, that it, will, it, will, it will go right at you and, and uh, chew you up or, or bite you or, or suck, your, suck your blood? Or that, or they're, are they poisonous, these animals? Are they rabid? Look, contrary to popular misconception, bats have perfectly good eyes. You couldn't tangle one in your hair if you tried. Now, where does the expression blind as a bat come from, then, if they have good eyes? Where is that a... Not true? It's absolutely not true. It just perfectly exemplifies how badly misunderstood bats are. There isn't any such thing as a blind bat. I always thought that they were blind and, and, and uh, navigated through some unbelievably well-developed sense of radar. Uh, a sophisticated... Oh, this guy, has a, this, this guy has a super sense of, of sonar. This bat can see everything you can see with sound alone. Everything but color. Mm -hmm. And in addition, he can detect something as fine as a human hair and has eyes to boot. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see some of the other ones you have. Uh, Let me point out before I put this guy away that left alone, this fellow can catch 500 to 900 insects in an hour at night, uh -huh. largely mosquitoes. And so he's, he's very, very beneficial. Uh, can they be trained, these animals? Yes. Uh -huh. To do Even what? a little one like this can what be can trained. What can you train to... that one to do? Oh, come on, call. If you... Come on call, you can right. get the thing to fly to you? That's right. Why on earth would you want to do that? <laughs> let's, let's see some of the other ones, Merlin. Now, this is, you're going to put it in here. All right. This is the, the, the bat box. The bat box. <laughs> and, of course, we know what that is. <laughs> Better call Commissioner go. Gordon. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the other ones. They're not harmful at all. Oh, no. You say that like, well, one out of 50 could be harmful. <laughs> okay. No, no, back, don't, don't get that one out again. Guy. No, let's, no, let's see the big ones. Back to him. Everybody thinks they're all rabid and going to attack them. Yeah. But the facts are that more people die, only 10 people have died in all recorded history from contact with one of those bats. Mm -hmm. In comparison, you know, you have to put danger, you know, in, it's all relative. In comparison, more people die in a single year from food poison contracted church picnics, being struck on the head by Ooh. coconuts, Ooh. or even from their own dogs. Ooh. Now look at this cute guy. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we'll let the audience judge. Now isn't this cute? That is, that is a, a very strange looking animal. Now, what does that weigh? That's about a, a half a pound or more, maybe? Oh, no, he's only made less than a quarter of a pound. Good heavens, what kind of bat is that? This is from Africa. It's an Angolan fruit bat. And this bat <laughs> pollinates banana flowers. You know, you wouldn't have bananas, mangoes, avocados, dates, figs, cashew nuts, tequila liquor, all sorts Without of things. It wasn't for bats like this. Right, let's, can you open him up a little bit? Uh... Well, he doesn't Doctor. like that too much. But, now look uh, at the <laughs> look at the teeth on this guy. Now why do they have the teeth? What it? He has no bigger teeth in proportion to his size than than your dog. Yeah. And you and by comparison, let me point out that although even I like dogs, dogs kill one to two times more people and outright attacks annually in the United States than have died from any contact with bats in all history. Let me just touch the hair. Is this is this fur? Is it similar yes, to? Yes. Sure. Sure. What is a relative of the bat? People. <laughs> Primates. Yeah. Wow. But before, before we leave the audience with a bad impression that I'm down on dogs, let me point out that it would be very hypocritical to uh, malign dogs when, in fact, our own spouses kill us off at the rate of 10,000 a year. Uh, now, let me ask you about the vampire bats. Is there such a thing as a vampire bat? Yes, there is. The trouble is that they get publicity far out of proportion to their numbers. Only a tiny fraction of 1% of the world's bats are vampires, and they now, all live they in Latin live? America. Oh, they, they don't, don't live, live in the United States. Yeah. And they're smaller than this one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you, do you have any more bats in there? Sure. Oh, all right. We, we're, we're running uh, very short on time here, Doctor, so let's take a look at this last bat, and then we'll uh, wrap things up. 
Now, what's the best thing to do if you get one in the middle of the summertime, you get one in your house, it flies in through the screen? Ooh. Ooh. Now that's... What, what have you done to that chihuahua? <laughs> but did you know that this bat, this bat is responsible for a hundred million dollar a year crop in West Africa? By, by eating off the dangerous insects? No, 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 this fellow transports the seeds of the Oroko tree and the timber from that tree sells for a hundred million dollars a year. That's the strangest looking animal I've ever seen. But look at his face. Yeah. His face is really Ooh. no different than a lot know, of people's it, dogs. It, it gives you the chills a little bit. Doctor, this is fascinating. These are unbelievable animals. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Say hello to the folks in Milwaukee. For us. <laughs> we'll be right back with John, please. The Jones House. For 150 years, folks have been coming here for breakfast. Now Jones has cooked up something new. Jones Brown and Serve Sausage. Made like the Jones Sausage you grew up on, with the same lean cuts of pork and no artificial preservatives. The difference is, Jones Brown and Serve Sausage is ready in five minutes. They're ready already? Jones Brown and Serve. A delicious new reason to come to the Jones House for breakfast. If anyone can tell you how many cities United flies to, I can. 151. Because every morning, flight after flight, lifts off of the load of my sweet rolls. 747s, 767s, DC-10, New York to LA, Miami to Seattle. So many flights to so many cities with so many of my sweet rolls. So next time you're in the friendly skies, someone says, My compliments to the sweet roll man. You'll know who they're talking about. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. America sings your praise. You kept the holidays right in tune. You gave us memories of the moon, winter weekends, and summer afternoons that we could wish upon. America turns on Emerson, cause Emerson turns America on. Emerson products that turn America on at fine stores everywhere. There's a lot of cars out there, but there's only one number one. Nissan Sentra. Why is Sentra America's best-selling import? Sentra owners will tell you. A stable riding car, it's quiet on the highway, uh, very solid feeling. I can fit five people in it comfortably, and I just love it. Your Nissan dealer's the one to see. The Nissan Sentra, America's way of getting more than its money's worth. At your nearby New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut Nissan Datsun dealers. Vicks has it. Ooh. That quick feeling of relief from instantly penetrating Vicks vapors, plus a powerful decongestant that opens nasal passages and allows you to breathe freely. Ah, complete relief. For hours and hours, Sinex gives you an instant feeling of relief. Ooh. And complete relief. Ah. Sinex in regular and extra strength. From Vicks, of course. Who has created a new dawn of performance, versatility, and simplicity? only RCA. Introducing the full spectrum video monitors, all high performance televisions and more. Designed to get the most from your video components. You simply plug in video games, your stereo, and your VCR for audio and video excitement that's as different as night and day. The full spectrum video monitors, only from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. Daytona, the 24-hour endurance classic. Just to finish is a testament to reliability, but to win is a dream realized by few. Yet for three straight years, Mazda RX-7 has won its class at Daytona. And the Mazda RX-7 you can drive is also a winner in offering outstanding value and performance. Get a lot of value at your local Mazda dealers today. Sunday, Paul Newman is a cop. Caught between the woman he loves and the fight against police brutality. In Fort Apache, the Bronx, Sunday. 
Monday, an NBC movie premiere. Living in a war taught them to hate. Can a summer in America teach them to love? Don't miss Children in the Crossfire, Monday. Wednesday's Live at Five, we'll meet two members of the rock group U2. And believe it or not, Jack Palance will be here. And Pia reviews No Small Affair. Join us.